An amino acid is a small molecule that, when combined with other amino acids, makes up a protein molecule. Because of this, amino acids are often referred to as the building blocks of proteins. Amino acids get their name because they contain both the amine or amino functional group, NH2, and also the carboxylic acid functional group, C, double bonded to an O with an OH. In addition, that central carbon, which is often called the alpha carbon, has a hydrogen atom attached. Let's go ahead and label that carbon atom the alpha carbon. The alpha carbon has one more thing attached to it, and this uh, fourth thing attached varies from one amino acid to another. So I'm just going to use the letter R as an abbreviation for this, whatever this thing might be. And we'll just make a note here that this R group varies uh, from one amino acid to another, and this is what gives the amino acid its identity. Uh, there are 20 amino acids that are found in nature, and it's a good idea for you to find a table of all of these amino acids that shows those R groups for each amino acid. You can have that handy as a reference. You've probably got a good table of amino acids in your textbook. There are also a lot of really good ones online. So I just googled table of amino acids, and you can see that there's a whole bunch of them that have popped up lot of different ones and you can choose one that just looks visually appealing to you. You kind of pick whichever one you want. Um, and so I'm going to look at say I like the way this one looks right here and I want to zoom in on this and just take a closer look at it. So you can see on this table of amino acids the R group, the thing that I wrote as R, is being shown in this pinkish color for all of these amino acids. So you can see the structure of the R group for each individual amino acid. In addition to that, underneath of each amino acid, it's listing the name of the amino acid, and then in parentheses, there are two different abbreviations. Amino acids are known by three-letter abbreviations, and they're also known by a single-letter abbreviation. So, you know, just kind of depending on the purpose, sometimes it's useful to do a three-letter abbreviation, sometimes it's useful to do a single-letter abbreviation. So find a table that is like this. This is a, you know, a good thing to have handy when you're working on uh, problems in this particular chapter. You'll also notice that some of these tables are sorting, well, I guess all of these tables are sorting the amino acids into about four different categories. They're based on whether the amino acid is acidic or basic or polar or nonpolar. Now, something that you may have noticed at that last table that I pulled up is that the structure of the amine group and the structure of the carboxylic acid group look a little bit different than what I drew on the slide. So instead of a COOH, it has a COO minus, and instead of an NH2, it has an NH3 plus. Let's talk about that a little bit. At a physiological pH, so at the pH of, let's say, the human body, the amino acid molecules are actually ionized. So they don't have a hydrogen over here. Instead of having a hydrogen over there, that hydrogen is missing, and this is a negatively charged oxygen. That missing hydrogen is actually located over here on the amino group, it's NH3, and that makes the nitrogen ionized as well. This is referred to as a Zwitter ion. Zwitter ion is a word that we use to describe a molecule that has both positive charge and a negative charge. So it's not a cation and it's not an anion, it's a Zwitter ion. And again, at physiological pH, at the pH of our human body, amino acids exist exclusively in this ionized form. The last thing that I want to do on this slide is just kind of give you a little bit of a description of how we sort those amino acids. So like on the tables of amino acids that I pulled up, the way that they were grouped in uh, four different categories on those tables, where that sorting comes from. So the amino acids first division, so the first way that they're divided by among each other is whether they are nonpolar or polar. A nonpolar amino acid, for a nonpolar amino acid, the R on the amino acid could be hydrogen or it could be a, a larger group that contains only carbons and hydrogen atoms. So we refer to that as a hydrocarbon. So for a nonpolar amino acid, this R group is either hydrogen or it's a few atoms, but all of the atoms are either hydrogen and carbon. There's no oxygens, no nitrogens, no sulfur, nothing like that. For a polar amino acid, the R group contains an oxygen, a sulfur, or a nitrogen atom. It's gonna also have carbons and hydrogens in it as well, but it's in addition to the carbons and hydrogens, it's gonna have one of these three different types. The polar amino acids are further categorized, so they're further divided up um, to be either neutral 
we call those polar neutral, or acidic, or basic. I'm going to start by describing the acidic amino acids first. In the acidic amino acid, the R group has a carbon oxygen, uh, has a carboxylic acid group. So sometimes it's written as COO minus like that. Sometimes it's written as COOH. So it could be written as either way. The next one I'm going to describe is the basic amino acids. For a basic amino acid, the R group has a nitrogen with a positive charge on it, or it has a nitrogen that is part of a double bond. Nitrogen double bonded to another nitrogen, or a nitrogen double bonded to a carbon, or something like that. The neutral amino acids are everything else. So by all others, all other options, I'm going to say it's not this, it's not this, and it's not this. If it's not one of these three things, then we call that a neutral polar amino acid.